Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Garage. Today's video is part 10, 10 in the Bronco paint series. Now, you've probably seen the other videos where I've worked on this Bronco. It came to me as basically a new body, uh, all raw or in uh, well-through primer or in EDP coating or whatever. I did a bunch of prep work on it. I did some repair work to the vehicle itself from where the sheet metal was not done correctly and I fixed some of that stuff. If you're interested, go back and look at those other videos. However, this video is going to be, hopefully, the paint video for the body. So I'm gonna go over the vehicle and show you where it's at, status, how it's masked, and all those sort of things. I do have some time lapse of where I mask off the vehicle. You know, there's uh, different ways to do these sort of things, but this works for me. You can probably see I back mask the uh, wheel wells with tape, and then I put paper onto that tape and various other things that I've done along the way. Now, of course, I will be painting this and hopefully clear coating it all today. If I can't, then I will be ba painting the base coat today and the clear coat tomorrow. That's just the way it is. You have to have good temps for all these things. I currently have the mini split running with the heat mode on, trying to get some more heat in here. Unfortunately, with the process, you'd have to have airflow. So everybody thinks, uh, I think a lot of people think you just spray paint in a controlled or closed space and it's all good, but it's not. You have to have airflow to help it dry and also to remove overspray. So when you have movement, you also sacrifice heat. So I'm gonna have my windows open on the side here to let air in and it'll go out through the uh, fans. So it's just a sacrifice that has to happen. Hopefully it all works. <laughs> so let's take a look at what I'm painting with and how the Bronco looks right now. So for materials, I am using PPG Limestone Green brand code 2412 and I'm using Omni Plus clear coat, some HET reducer, and I will say I've been using this gun right here. This is the HVLP Pro 88 uh, Master HP Pro Series. I picked this up about a month ago because I was a little concerned with some of the other guns that I have in my inventory which are up here on the shelf and this thing has done a fantastic job. I will post a link in the description below if you're interested in trying one of these. This comes with three different tips, the 1.3 to 1.4 and the 1.8 tip. Here is a dilemma that I have. Most of the clear coat work that I've done has been with this DeVilbus gun and it's worked fine but it currently has some sort of a problem now it could be just wear and tear from use it could be old i don't know but it has a kind of a a shuddering feel to it and the pattern of clear is not very good so with that i have actually done the last section that i did which was the grill i did base and clear with the same gun and i used the 1.3 tip and it worked out really really nice so on to the Bronco. Oh, here's something else. In the paint booth area, I currently have the Loki Thor. This is the, uh, what is it, RW401, I think is the number on it. I think that's what it says right there. AW, RW, one of the two. And this thing is a little pressure washer that was provided by Loki Thor. And I really like it at this point because I can wet down the floor with the pressure washer function. I've shown this before, but I really like that feature. Okay, so here's the Bronco. Now, when I'm doing this, when I'm painting, I want to have my paint flow constant. I want to have the direction flow over the panels. So it's simple enough to have these in place, but with these fenders, you have problems because you have this flange internally, which can be seen when the door is closed. If you saw my other videos, I've already sprayed the A-pillars, and the windshield frame, that's why that is all masked off like that. And then the fenders, I actually have them sitting forward about three inches or so. And there happens to be a bolt hole that is in the rail here, the inner fender. And I put a nut clip on there and I have this bolt just to keep everything from moving. Along with that, I have taken not only plastic over the whole engine bay area, but also paper and I put a bolt right here so that I can get the spray inside of this area. 
Normally, if I didn't have that bolt, this would be tight up against the paper. I don't want that. So that gives just a little bit of a buffer. Same thing over here. Plastic is backing me up. Uh, I'll probably put some more tape on that piece just to be safe. And then, same thing on this side. The only difficulty is you have a little bit of a tight space right in here to spray. I can't get the inside edge. I'm not too worried about it, but just so you know, that's part of the problem with having uh, this design. Also, the doors. What I've done is I screwed on some little pieces of wood on the inside, a couple screws here, and this piece of wood on, the, on that piece. The idea being, when I'm spraying, and I want to reach in and get this door open, because I'm spraying the inside and the outside at the same time, I can reach over, put my hand on that, and push the door open. And that will give me something to push on that's not the actual door. So, everything else is set up here, all been scuffed and primed, and then everything has been gone over with Scotch-Brite. Uh, I still need to wipe it down, but once I get it wiped down, and the temperatures get a little bit warmer, I'll be good to go. Uh, as you see, I do have paper kind of laying in here. I'm not too worried about overspray getting in these areas at this point because I will be putting in bed liner material and that's going to be a line, basically a cut line right here. It's going to come back down to here. And then all of this internally will be sprayed with the bed liner material. Um, same thing here with the door block. So that's all good to go. And of course, I need to wipe it down and get ready to spray.
Okay, <laughs> it's green and this is just the base coat. Now, is it perfect? No, there will be flaws, but it looks pretty darn good in my opinion and I am happy with it overall. As you probably saw, I took the um, sunlight that I got from Harbor Freight and went over everything that I could where I thought there may be some problems. And sure enough, there were. One of those was underneath this overhang. I didn't quite have enough coverage on that, so when I was spraying my last coat, I angled the gun slightly to make sure I got more up in that area. And then the fenders, because it's still a little bit tall for me, uh, this was showing gray inside of that. So went over those a couple more times to make sure I had good coverage on those as well. But everything's working out the way it should. My little bolt down there is keeping that off of the uh, core support. And now, I think it's pretty much time for clear. I'm really, really excited about it. Things are looking good. The little wood panel, uh, wood piece that I put inside worked very well for uh, opening the door. The only area that is going to give me grief, and it's, it's just really not much I can do about it, but it's the area behind in here, inside of that hinge. Now I got paint down in that area, but there's really no way around it. You can't just blow hard with the gun, you know, it'll run, make it run. And thankfully I didn't get any runs coming out of that. Uh, I tried all I could to get that in there, but it is what it is. If I need to, I can maybe address it later. When I, Because these, these hinges are going to be coming back off. So we'll see. We'll see how it looks once I get everything uh, completely sprayed. But yeah, so far... So good. So here it is, 
three coats of base, three coats of clear, still a lot of fumes in here. Hey, I just made a little run. Um, it does have a little bit of orange peel, which is not unexpected. I did manage to put a run right here at the door handle. I don't know if there's, there might be some other ones somewhere, but I really haven't, haven't seen them, which is a good thing. And the last round, I was really pouring the clear onto it, trying to get as much on. There's some runs right there. Good. That means I got enough on there. <laughs> Inside the door. Like, like I said, there's still a lot of fumes in here, so this is just a quick look at it. I don't know how well that shows up, but... Anyway, uh, tomorrow morning I'll be unmasking it, or maybe even tonight yet, but uh, i got to unmask it and get another look at everything. But I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I mean, the color is on, clear, laid out for the most part decent. A um, couple runs here and there, but yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, so here it is the next day, and things are looking pretty good. Fender looks good. Uh, of course, I painted the cowl previously, and the color matches very nicely between the door frame and the uh, windshield frame. Otherwise, things look pretty good. There is a slight run right there, and I think there was, I pointed out earlier, there were some runs over here on the left quarter. This isn't surprising because this quarter gets the least amount of airflow but these runs will clean up you can see them probably see them right there those will clean up maybe a bit of a sag up here uh, on this edge but again not not bad at all the really good thing about this is there's there were no bugs at all and almost zero dust nibs maybe one or two I don't even you know, there's there's one right there. I mean, I'm having trouble finding them. Um, that's how clean this is at this point. Things look good over here. Now, um, I'll show you the other fender. I have it sitting out in the sun, and I'll show you that in just a second as well. Again, hardly any any kind of dust nibs, and it does also have. Now there's a little bit of a run right there, and right there, and right there. Again, pretty minor overall. So, it's going to take a little while to let all this really get hard enough, let's say, to do anything else with it and start dealing with the runs. But overall, very happy. Whew! That's a lot to do basically in one day. I didn't know for sure if the weather conditions were going to be good to get the paint and the clear coat on, you know, in the same day, but it worked out. The nice part about it is no, no bugs. That's, that's a big plus. Uh, very little as far as dust nibs or anything like that, and some runs to deal with. Now, of course, you have to let that cure. You can't just dig in there and start sanding and doing all those different things. I know that a lot of people say, or some painters will say, you have a um, so many hours or days or whatever to make that happen. I'm still addressing some stuff, uh, some minor runs that were painted a couple weeks ago. It's cleaning up fine. It's not that big of a deal. But it is a lot to do in one day and I'm so happy to have it done. Now, of course, I don't have everything fully assembled yet and I still need to do the spray and bed liner. So I have to let everything cure enough that I can tape that off sand the floor, spray epoxy, and then come back and put in the bed liner stuff. So still a lot to do. I'm trying to get it done by next week. Uh, I don't say there's no way it's going to be done by this Friday. And uh, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, I hope you got something out of this video. If you would leave a thumbs up and a comment. As usual, I want to thank my patrons for supporting me in doing these videos. It's, it's very much appreciated. You know, it's, it's a struggle to try anymore 
to make revenue on YouTube. It's just not paying as well as it used to. And so at this point, I'm doing it because I want people to know and learn things. So if you're interested in becoming a patron, there is a link in the description below. And also uh, use my Amazon if you can to try to help keep things moving. But that's going to be it for now. And uh, hopefully I can do an overview of the vehicle once it's all put back together. But until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya.